Good morning. We are going to tackle the east wall of the solar shed today. The first step was to lay out a tarp because I'm hoping to capture what I scrape off the walls and reuse it in the next batch. And uh, using a hammer, a cold chisel, and a scraper, I'm going to try to level out this wall. And that does mean, unfortunately, taking down these hemispheres on both sides. And the plan is to use a well-fortified earthen cob, fortified with Portland cement. And we're going to work from here down. We will be covering these bricks. We're going to basically smooth out the entire wall. And then we'll probably recreate a design with uh, more hemispheres. So let's get going. So using this scraper, I realized that what's remaining on the wall here is pretty damn strong. I'm able to get crumbles coming off, and I want to get everything that's loose off, but I don't want to take too much substrate down if it's not necessary. So the next step really is going to be to get the hemispheres down. I tried getting those off with the, uh, with the scraper, and it just wasn't working. So a cold chisel proved to do the trick. I just want to be careful not to take off too much of the substrate. And there you go. So real time, about five minutes to get all those down. Wasn't a big deal. Hopefully we can recycle this material. Now that I have all the hemispheres removed from the building, it's time to gather our raw materials. So we have straw here that needs to be chopped. We have plenty of soil, but what I have to do is uh, grab a couple buckets, head down to the wash and grab some clay. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm down in the wash getting some clay, and all of these mounds that you see here are pure clay. What happens is, is after this wash runs real hard, the clay collects on itself and creates these mounds. So that about, that's about the size of a football right there. And they go all back here. You can see all of these mounds. And actually as you walk, up the wash. Now we're getting into larger clay deposits. I mean that one right there, I'd say it's 18 by 12 by 12. These are really just large deposits of pure clay. It's awesome for making earthen plaster. While Yvonne is out getting dirt for our earthen plaster, I'm getting some straw and running it through our chopper or I should say our shredder um, to make it a little finer. This is a bunch of straw that I picked up really cheap from a rancher who didn't want it anymore. It was old. It had been out in the weather. It really wasn't suitable for bedding for animals anymore and but it's perfect for what we're doing. It's perfect for uh, using a co composting toilet. It's perfect for covering your uh, compost pile and it's perfect for making earthen plaster because it's already very fine. Let's see if I can pull some off for you. It's already very fine here. Look at it when it's going into this container. So you can see it's all it's it's almost as if it's pre-chopped. So what I'll do is I'll run this through the shredder one more time and then it'll be good to go. Oh by the way look what we found on the roadside yesterday. That's a javelina skull and mandible 
and it's rare to find with all their all the teeth still in place it's pretty cool this is the shredder we use we got it off of Amazon it's a Sunjo and it's made really for leaves and very very small twigs it's nothing more than a glorified weed eater there are nylon or plastic strips inside that uh, spin around real fast just like a weed eater and chop up the straw or leaves and it works for us real well this is the here's a classic before and after that's what I just pulled out of the uh, out of the bale and that's what it looks like after it's gone through the chopper so it's a real quick process what I did was I built this adapter here and that just sits on top of a garbage can then I can take the shredder it's hard to do with one hand sorry about this here we go <laughs> there it's in okay and then uh, that way the shredded material goes right into uh, to the garbage can and is caught there it's a lot easier than having to use a plastic bag which is what the manufacturers suggest okay so here are the ingredients for our new recipe we're going to start with this two gallon bucket of water to that we will add one container of Portland cement two containers of Portland cement if we're making the hemispheres four handful handfuls of very finely chopped straw one five gallon bucket of our soil here which is about 15 percent clay and it's been sifted through a 1 8 inch hardware cloth and then we have a one quarter bucket of pure clay so if I were to break it down into ratios it would be one part Portland cement four parts clay and 20 parts native sifted soil, four handfuls of straw, more or less depending on the batch, and two gallons of water. In the past, we had used a uh, cement mixer to make our cob mix. And since we don't have that available to us right now, we are making our cob mixtures in the wheelbarrow. At first, it proved to be a little more of a challenge to get a consistent result, but with practice, like anything else, it turned out to be just fine. You can see how red the mixture is, and it concerned us a little bit because the color of the cement coloring that we had purchased was buff. So this appeared to be more terracotta, so it made us a little bit nervous, but we uh, were patient, waited for it to dry completely, and the results were very good. Another thing that threw us for a loop was that the clay that I had harvested from the wash was wet and it as a result did not absorb as much water as the previous batches we had made so we found ourselves adding more material. So we've got the uh, recipe put together and it looked a little thin so we gave it about 30-35 minutes to slake and firm up and now we're going to put the first coat over the uh, bricks that are exposed in the wall. So like every other wall that we've cobbed, you start with wetting down the area thoroughly to make sure that the substrate will, uh, will take the new cob material. Otherwise, the new cob just won't stick to a bone dry wall. And the first thing we wanted to do was fill in this area that we had previously made out of adobe brick. We were a little sad to see it go, but at the same time, not really. Yvonne has just got this technique down. She can put that stuff up so fast with her hands. It's just, it's just amazing. In fact, she's got to come over and help me finish up.
I just want to do a quick little recap. This is what happens to our regular recipe when we add Portland cement. Here we've made that same recipe, also with Portland cement, but we've added a coloring agent. This right here. Liquid cement color from Quickcrete in the color buff. We added a half a little can full to our recipe to try to give it a little bit more of a natural brown color as opposed to going into the gray. So we'll see what happens. Up here, where it's already kind of drying with a swipe, it's getting very close to our traditional or our natural cob color. So with any kind of luck at all, this is gonna dry very similar to what we have on the other sides of the building. Now it really doesn't matter whether it's a perfect match or not because we're gonna be covering the entire surface of the building here with another coat tomorrow. Right now, as you can see, there's a threat of rain, which we were not expecting. With the rain approaching, we were able to get it done, and we got the wall tarped over to protect our work that we just got done completing. So tomorrow we'll do the unveiling, check out the color, and put on a second coat. Ooh, it's thundering. It's, it might actually rain. <laughs> Okay guys, it's the next day and the sun is no longer hitting the side of the east side of the solar shed, so I removed the tarp. We even though we had no threat of rain last night, I wanted to make sure that the morning sun did not come beating down on this cob as it's drying. I just wanted it to be a slower cure and it is about noon right now and this side is in shade, so I removed the tarp and I'm doing a little bit of a closer inspection. And I got to tell you, I don't know what we did, but whatever we did, I think we did it right. Because on real close inspection, I'm not seeing any cracks at all. I mean, I'm not seeing any hairline cracks, larger cracks. Usually by this time, you would see some sort of evidence of cracking had the mix not been proper had it dried too quickly, uh, maybe not enough straw. Whatever it was, we got it just right because this is looking really awesome. And it, when you touch it, you can feel how solid it is. And this is with a very minor amount of Portland cement added to the mix. You saw our new recipe and uh, it seems to be working out well. So we're gonna give Give it another hour for the sun to move a little further so we're working totally in shade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go from here up to that header. And then this side will be completely covered with its base coat. <laughs>
Okay, we've got the second coat applied and both Yvonne and I were not real happy with the way that it went on. It seemed to have a little more aggregate in it than usual. Even though I pulled the dirt from the exact same spot as yesterday, I screened it the exact same way. For whatever reason, it just came out like it had a little more grit in it. And as a result, it created a lot of little pock marks, as you can see right here and all along here. Now, when I go back and I hit it with the sponge, I'm hoping that I'll be able to close those up and make it look more like that from yesterday. We'll see, but we ran it up as high as we could. This center area is gonna be covered with hemispheres again, and it's already, see, here's the problem when you do it in stages. You get transitions from here to here. Getting it to smoothly creamy, in a creamy fashion, go over so you get like a seamless transition is just not possible. Here it is again on Yvonne's side, and here it is from yesterday. It's going to be the same thing as I go along here. You know, you can try to sponge it, and no matter what, it's still going to be visible. So we're going to camouflage that using our hemisphere technique, and I'm sure it'll look cool when we're done. This is what the wall looks like now that uh, the entire base coat is complete. You can see there's a little bit of a tonality difference between the first day and the second day. And that's just because the colorant, I guess we'd have to get really super exact with the amount of colorant in order to get the same tone. Uh, I've also heard and read reviews on HomeDepot.com that people have complained that the color is not consistent from bottle to bottle. Whatever the case may be, uh, we're going to now begin with the fun part, and that is uh, applying the Adobe Hemispheres to the wall. This is going to give us then a little more of an interesting uh, decoration as well as uh, creating microclimates on the wall. So we've mixed our batch. The batch is very much similar to what we used for the wall. We reduced the amount of straw by probably 75%, and we doubled the amount of Portland cement. Uh, I've also double sifted our dirt that came out of the, out of the uh, property in an effort to make it less granular. So it's looking pretty good, and I think we're getting ready to apply the hemispheres. So this is the part of the project that everyone thinks is the most fun. And while it is fun to uh, attach these hemispheres to the wall, it also does require uh, the most amount of time. It's just getting the hemispheres to stick properly and also to uh, get them placed in a position that will look good. It takes a little bit longer than just doing a flat, uh, a flat mudding of a wall. We decided to start right in the center of the window with the first hemispheres and work our way down and around. And the goal is to cover imperfections such as the seams or transitions from the first day's work to the second day's work. So that kind of dictates the design that we, uh, we ended up going with. Again, this was uh, something we tried a couple different, uh, we've done this technique a few different times, and each time we try to tweak it and make it a little bit better or see if we can improve it in one way or another. And it's uh, this mix with the extra Portland cement certainly made for a durable product. Here I wanted to give you a uh, view in real time of how the process is completed. So Yvonne just takes a glass bowl, wets it down with water, fills it with our cob mixture, and getting the right amount in there. If it's not enough, it won't stick. If it's too much, it makes a real mess when you go to press it onto the wall. But she uh, puts it in position and begins rotating in an effort to break the seal the suction seal between the cob and the glass bowl. And there it is. Perfect. Now what we've learned is to use small pallet knives and clean up as we go, and that makes the next step quite a bit easier. Now that the hemispheres have had about a half an hour time to set up on the wall, I go, go back with a small palette knife and start cleaning up around the edges. And what I'm trying to do is make sure it gets a good seal as well as get any uh, excess material off the flat portion of the wall. 
There's also a few cracks on the surface of the hemisphere that I try to uh, try to close up using the palette knife. We're really going after as clean and precise of a look in this area as possible. It's a little bit of a tedious job, but uh, once you get it done, it's, uh, it's well worth the effort. The next step is to come back with a small uh, brush and some water and basically uh, wash over the hemispheres, kind of like you're putting an egg glaze on a loaf of bread before baking. And what this will do is bring some of the, uh, it'll close up some of the pock marks and holes in the, in the uh, cob as well as create a better seal around the edges to the wall. All right, we're calling it a day. We've got the hemispheres up. We used a new technique this time where we really tried to clean out in between the individual hemispheres and we had some extra material left over and this window frame was in desperate need of repair so Yvonne did some Art Nouveau designs on it and then I came back and sponged it up and we'll see how it dries. This is what we're going to be using to seal the wall once it's completely dry. It's been recommended for porous type uh, stone and concrete surfaces. So it's water base. It does allow the wall to continue to breathe and it didn't break the bank. I mean, this bottle was about $24 at Amazon, including shipping. And it's supposed to do about 150 square feet, which will be approximately two of the walls like we just did of that size. So. If it causes the wall to be weather resistant, then it'll be well worth the, the extra money. So we did a little test on an ashtray that Yvonne built uh, a little while back using just about the same mix as what we're using now. I believe this was actually the mix we used on the um, straw bale bench. It just It's the same configuration or the same recipe as what we use today, except that it didn't have any colorant in it. So we're going to, she applied this with a brush and we're going to let it dry and see how it works as far as wet, uh, water repellent is concerned. We will be applying that with this with a pump garden sprayer as recommended by the manufacturer, which will also make doing those hemispheres a lot easier. So it's the next day. The little ashtray item here doesn't appear to have any kind of color change at all. And now let's look at the effect that the waterproofing has on it. I don't know if you can see how that's moving around in there. That looks like a pretty good waterproofing to me. It's just slipping around and sliding around. It looks almost like mercury. So I would say this stuff is going to be successful in helping prevent any rain damage to our earthen plaster walls. Look at the bottom. See that? That's where it wasn't protected. It absorbed the water on the top. Nothing. Okay, at this point in the video, I got to cut in and give you a little bit of an update for continuity purposes. We had several days of rain. We were under a lot of time pressure to get the walls cobbed as quickly as possible. So there was some filming that didn't get done. So what's going to happen now is you're going to see that our first wall that you saw in the video is complete. Actually the wall behind us, the north wall is also complete. And we are getting ready to work on the west side of the wall over by the straw bale bench. So I just want to clarify that in case there's any uh, confusion. So we've been having hard rain for about uh, three hours now and this is real interesting. Check this out. This area down here that's dark 
has not been waterproofed. All these spheres have been waterproofed and you can clearly see the difference, the tonality difference. Here I can also see along my edge where I've got to go a little bit more aggressive with my waterproofing. But that's real clear that these, that waterproofing on these hemispheres is just shedding the water like a waxed car. Let's check out the other side. And here you can see that there's been rain coming through here and that this is all nice and dry. This side, no evidence of any kind of rain hitting this side of the building at all, which is real good. And then I just kind of sprayed the back here with waterproofing before we did any repairs. We're really not gonna try to render any repairs back here. We're just gonna let this uh, go. This area will be repaired, so I did not spray this because I didn't wanna impede the uh, adhesion of the new cob or earthen plaster onto the substrate. So right now here you can see also, I don't know if, I, if it shows up on camera, how it's water's purled up on the side of the steps. This has all been waterproofed. So that waterproofing appears to have really done its job. Oh, here, we got this visitor here. We have trees, mesquite trees, full of these guys right now. Anyways, if anybody knows what those bugs are, let us know. We've been trying to figure it out. Anyways, the waterproofing appears to really be working. So that's good news. And this is actually two coats on these hemispheres. I've only done one coat on the other sides of the buildings thus far, but uh, once this remaining part dries out, we're going to be doing this lower portion here and around the corner that I just showed you. Once that's complete, then it'll be getting a complete uh, second coat of waterproofing. At this point in time, the lower portion of the wall has been cobbed with our new recipe, including a double portion of Portland cement. And now I'm applying that same waterproofing material to both sides of this new uh, new work that we just completed. Applying it with the sprayer allows for quick work, especially on uneven surfaces. For the second coat of waterproofing, I went with this product that I got at Home Depot. It was about half the price of the first product we used, had good reviews, and it is also breathable. It is basically the same type of material as the first one, but it uh, is half the price. This also can only be used on vertical surfaces. The first one that I used was designed for both vertical and horizontal surfaces, and uh, which means you could drive on that first product. We don't need to drive on these walls, so I went with this. And what I like about this is it goes on milky white, dries clear, and there's no streaking. The first one did leave a few uh, streaks if I oversaturated a certain area. With this product, I can really saturate the wall. As you can see back here, I really saturated it. And when it dries, there's no runs. So let's do a walk around. This is the first wall you saw us doing in the video. It's now complete. The hemispheres are dried, secured. We were able to use some of the same material that we used for the hemispheres to repair around the window. Everything has been waterproofed. And the difference between this wall and the subsequent walls you're about to see is this, uh, this uh, recipe, the uh, dirt that came out of our property was only sifted through a quarter inch screen and it's a little granular. I'm gonna see if I can get in on it really close. After sponging it, you can see, there you go. You can really see the individual grains down there. The subsequent walls were made with either double or uh, double sifted er, uh, dirt out of our property, or I used uh, went to a one eighth inch screen. So let me back up so you can see what the results are. So what's new is also this entire wall has been completed using the same uh, recipe as on this wall over here. Um, we also use that same colorant and it made and makes a really nice transition i'm going to get in on a corner for example and so now we're able to really 
make it look nice when you go around the corner. So everything has been waterproofed. I'm going to back up a little bit here. So we decided to take the hemisphere motif and wrap it around the building just for, again, to uh, kind of just continue the design. We're not sure what we're going to do with this large empty wall here. There might be a sculpture in that in the future for this wall here. So, again, the texture of the wall is really nice and smooth now. After it's been sponged, you can see the sponging does, while it fills in some pock marks, it also does reveal some of the straw, which is kind of nice. It gives it a texture and adds some visual interest. So this is now the west wall. The west wall, we used a uh, our cob mix with double portion Portland cement. No colorant because we wanted it to have a little more of a uniform look with the uh, straw bale bench. This also has been waterproofed. The whole thing is done. And then we decided to wrap this design around the corner And Yvonne made some beautiful wave-like designs, also repeating the hemisphere. And when you look at this now, this design does travel up and down and around the corner, locks in the straw bale bench. And this area had 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 expo was exposed to some pretty bad damage during the monsoon rains. And now with this fortified cob mixture. I am confident that we have solved that problem. So we got so much rain, our rain barrels are completely full here. And that is now the look of our redone solar shed, including the six foot overhang and the rain barrel that doubles as a bistro table. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll put links in the description below. And if you have any questions or comments about what we've done here, we're always glad to entertain the questions and comments in the box below. We really appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking through a really long video, and uh, I hope you found it of interest. And until the next time, we'll see you in the next video.